Hello everyone and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. Today we're going to find out what happened to everyone once Julia passed away. And it was so sad that John and his mother were getting closer and John was just beginning his career. Julia would have been so amazed and happy with John's success. Three days after Julia's death, Julia and Jackie were taken to Edinburgh. At night the sisters would lay awake in the strange house and they were afraid to think of what happened to their mother. Julia's sisters didn't want to talk about Julia. Julia said it was the first week of September and seven weeks after her mother's death and they didn't know what had happened. They wanted to go home. They didn't go back to their house in Springwood. They were taken to Aunt Harriet's house called The Cottage. It was in Woolton and they were told that this is where the, they would be staying. Julia and her sister found out when they were in Scotland with Mater. The three sisters, Mimi, Harry, and Nanny, made them wards of the court and Bobby Dykins, their father, was deemed unfit by the court to keep them because he and Julia were never married. The court decided they would live in with Harry, Norman, and David in the cottage just around the corner from Mendips, and Dykins would pay for their upkeep, but they weren't allowed to live with him. So Bobby Dykins had left Springwood House. He didn't want to stay there without his daughters, and he stayed with his mother until he could get another place. Julia never knew if her father had wanted to keep them. He was in grief and with his job, he wouldn't have been able to look after them. Harry and her husband, Norman, and their son, David, rented the cottage from Mimi and from the new owners when Mimi sold it. So this was only a two-bedroom cottage, and Nanny had a bigger place, but I guess she didn't want to raise them, and Mater and Bert had a big house in Edinburgh. But after two months with Julia and Jackie, I guess they found out they didn't want the responsibility. Mimi, of course... Felt like the girls were never really part of the family, so of course she wasn't going to have them. John was about to go live with Julia and her family full time, but now he was stuck with Mimi and he wasn't permitted to talk about Julia and Jackie or sister Julia. He watched as they were moved from place to place and Mimi told John not to bother with them again. And years later, John told that to Julia. He said that um, John wrote Mater in July 1975 about he, how he tried to be with his sisters and help them. When Julia died, he tried to convince Mimi to take in the sisters, and he told Mater that Mimi wouldn't take them, though I wanted it, apart from Mummy, for company, and he said that with capital letters. And Dykins told his daughters later that those women just took over and that he was powerless. At the cottage, the sisters shared a bedroom with David and they were still full of questions about what was happening. They still didn't know where Julia was and where their father was, and they said that their father was working away, but he was not to see them until they were settled in. Julia knew where John lived, so one day she went to Mendips to find him. Julia entered the gate and was going through the trellis gate to the side garden and the back door, and she saw Mimi in the morning room window at the side of the house, and she looked mad. She knocked on the window and said, John isn't here. Go home now. And at that point, John's sister, Julia, thought that's all she wanted was to go home now. <laughs> so one day she saw the neighbors, the Starkeys, they were on, taking a walk by the house, that by the cottage. And she opened the gate and hugged them and asked with tears, when are you going to come see us? That was Mrs. Starkey doing that. And Harry turned up and said to the girls, go in. And now Harry said something to them and went inside with the girls. And when their Nana tried to visit, she was turned away at the door. Years later, Mrs. Starkey told Julia that Harry told them, don't come up here trying to see them again. But they weren't really looking for Julia and Jackie. They were just happened to be walking by. The next day, Norman, Harry's husband, woke them up early and took them to the living room. And he told them, your mother has died and gone to heaven. You won't see her again. So they were told at last. So Jackie and Julia screamed and screamed and Harry came into the room and asked him what he'd done, and he said they had to know. You were wrong. You should have told them. Somebody had to tell them. Julia later that afternoon went back to Mendips, and she found John this time, and they went to where the boys played cricket. And John told her that he had expected they could live with him and Mimi, and he wasn't told when they got back to Liverpool. And when he did learn they were back, he was told not to see them. On that day, they talked about Julia and cried. So nobody was allowed to talk about Julia. The sisters of Julia felt like she shouldn't be talked about, and that's how their family dealt with the loss. The sisters coped by getting lost in their schoolwork, 
and John, who was near 18, got drunk for a year, and he got into trouble, and his friends helped him to get through the first months. And John and Paul connected because Paul had lost his mom only 18 months before John had. And Paul remembered Julia and said that John absolutely adored Julia. She was a very beautiful woman and a very spirited woman, and she had long red hair. Paul remembered she was very good-looking and so full of life. She could play the banjo, and she was ahead of her time. Colin Hatton, the quarryman's original drummer, said, I first met John's mom, Julia, when I went to Mendips to see John. He was just leaving the house, and after our hellos, he asked if I wanted to see his mom at Springwood. Julia was very pleased to see John and invited us in. We sat and talked, and John had his guitar, and his mom sat and played it, talking chords. There was a lot of affection between John and Julia. And when he heard of her death, Colin said he was shocked and he didn't see John for a few weeks. And when they did meet, they stood and looked at each other and said nothing. And John knew that Colin had lost his mom years before. Nigel Wally, who was the manager of the quarrymen, was with Julia seconds before she died. He said that John took Julia's death very hard. John had lost Uncle George and then his mother before he was 18. And John could hardly face the funeral. He didn't want anyone to see him crying. For months afterwards, he wore black in her memory. So Jackie and Julia got visits with their daddy, and he had been allowed to visit them once or twice a week once they had settled down, and he was allowed to see them for an hour under Harry's watchful eye. And they talked about school and what they were up to, and they wanted to talk about Julia, but they didn't because of who might be listening, and they weren't allowed to go anywhere with him. And Julia found out from the former neighbor, Mrs. Starkey, that her father had exchanged houses with a family that lived a half a mile away on the other side of Walton Woods, and it was five minutes away from the cottage. All the furniture was moved there, and they went through the woods, knocking on doors to try to find their father. And when they found him, he was astonished and happy, and they would make secret visits, but always for short moments, so that they could keep their secret. Julie and Jackie loved Leah, Harriet's daughter, and she was grown and out of the house, she loved Aunt Julia, and she was like an elder sister who stayed often, and they also enjoyed being with David. That was Harriet and Norman's son. He became their honorary brother. A year after Julia's death, John was dating Cynthia, and he had a great friendship with Stu Sudcliffe. When school was out for the summer, Julia and Jackie got to spend a week with their father and Nana. Everyone was happy, and Julia said that her father always wanted them to stay, but they wouldn't let him have them. There had been talk of an orphanage, but that wasn't going to happen, and it was arranged that the father pay Harry, and it was agreed by the court. The week was up. Nobody said anything or came to get them, so they spent the whole summer with their daddy and Nana. Jackie and Julia never, never figured out why the sisters agreed to it. They were glad that they did, though. They didn't get to see their father that much, unfortunately, because he worked long hours but they were free from all the rules at Harry's house. So being together, they finally had the freedom to talk about Julia. They didn't do it too often because Dykins got upset thinking about her. He had tears in his eyes whenever he talked about her, and he had her clothes in his closet. When school started back, they were still staying with their daddy and Nana, and when Jackie and Julia played in the woods, they would see David every now and then. And John came around to see them and to see if they were okay. He would play with them and eat with them if they were eating. And this was the time that John was working for Dykins part-time. All the tips were collected in a jar, and Dykins had it arranged that all the tips were to be handed over to John at the end of the evening. And the same thing happened when Julia worked there. So Bobby and John had a relationship that lasted after Julia's death. Bobby was fond of John and did all he could to help him. John liked Bobby, but he didn't really consider him a father figure. John would bring Paul to the house, and he and Dykins got along pretty well together. John and Paul would play records for hours, slowing them down to write out the words to the songs. At this time, Jackie was 10 and Julia was 12. They stayed with their father for the whole school year, and then with the summer vacation coming up, Dykins told them that they were going to have to go back to the cottage. Nana wasn't feeling well, and she needed to go back to her own home and Dykin's job kept him away from his daughters at the times he needed to be there. When they got back, David went to Scotland for the summer with his cousin Michael, and the sisters were left with Harry and Norman. John wasn't there either, 
He quit art college and he had gone to Hamburg with the Beatles. When John decided to marry Cynthia, Julia said the neighbor, Mrs. Starkey, said, your mom should be there. She would love it. And you give that lad all the best wishes from us when you see him. And when the Beatles became famous, Julia and Jackie didn't see very much of John. He was away from home most of the time. And Julia loved hearing John on the radio on Saturday mornings. It was a way of following him. When Julia turned 16, her and her father spent more time together. He would ask her if she was all right and would give her some extra pocket money. She felt her father thought that being 16, she was closer to adulthood and could make her own decisions. And he wanted to see more of her. Jackie and Julia watched the Beatles on TV and were amazed that they were in America. Julia and Jackie asked John what it was like to be famous, and he would laugh and say it was great. So in 1964, the Beatles were playing the tour of Australia and New Zealand. When they got to New Zealand, John invited Aunt Mimi there. Mimi, she was ecstatic because there was family members there, and she wanted to take John around to meet them. While Mimi was away, Harry had been left the keys to Mimi's house to keep an eye on it. And when Julia was cleaning up at the cottage, she discovered the key and decided to use it. It was like a hideaway for Julia because she had never been alone. She never lit a fire, and if it got cold, she wore a coat. There was no electricity because Mimi had it shut off for her trip. And while in the house, Julia would read by the window and in the garden, and one night, she spent the night there telling Harry she was staying with her friend Ray, and she was 17 at this time. Julia played mini golf in the garden, laid in the sun, and went to the bed to read. She slept in John's old room because it was friendlier than the rest of the house. And when Mimi returned, she brought gifts from John. The Beatles had been in Hong Kong, and John found the gifts at a market. David, Michael, Jack, and Julia each got a watch and a radio alarm clock with fake fur coverings in black and white. Julia said they thought they were fab. So I'm going to end the video here. And we see how tough the girls had it when Julia died. They went a while before someone finally told them their mother had died. They were not allowed to mention her mom, which is a shame because I always felt it was comforting to share stories of loved ones when they passed away and made it, you feel closer to them. So it was nice that the family was allowed to be together for a time when Diggins and his mom took in the girls. And that lasted until Nana got sick and was unable to do it anymore. And it's also good to see that John kept trying to keep track of his sister and hadn't forgotten them. Even when he became famous, he was buying gifts for them. The next video will wrap up uh, the stories that Julia tells in her book, Imagine This. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And once more, if you like the video and could give it a thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. I wish everybody a good day. And tune in again soon for another episode of The Beatles Forever. Thank you. Bye.